Right, so we just went through the lint stage. In the next stage, it technically is test. So this is where we actually get to test our code. But is there any code that we can actually test in the repo right now? If you look at the source directory, we just have a single index.js file with a console log statement. So there's not much code to test necessarily. So what I propose is that we actually skip the test stage and go directly to the build stage instead. So first things first, we're gonna need a bundler. So one thing we could do is we could use the Webpack bundler, for example, which is a very popular choice for applications. But in this case, I'm actually going to go with a different bundler. The reason I'm not going to favor Webpack in this scenario is because Webpack actually adds quite a bit of setup boilerplate code to your bundle. So this is something that we want to avoid because we don't want to ship unnecessary code in our bundle. So there's a different bundler that library authors actually prefer, and this one is called Rollup. So the premise is pretty much the same, but the difference is that Rollup will simply concatenate the files. You could also do transformations on those files using plugins. So for example, with the Babel plugin, we can transform our code from ES6 to ES5. With the post CSS plugin, we can transform our post CSS syntax down to plain CSX. And of course, there's a bunch of other plugins as well. So it's more of a plug and play syntax. So you find a plugin that you want to use for a particular purpose. You put that plugin into your configuration file and then that plugin is going to be applied to transform your code. But without any plugins, Rollup will simply concatenate all of your assets. So it's not going to add any boilerplate code like Webpack does. And this is why I would prefer to use Rollup in this case. And in fact, it's very common among libraries to use Rollup to bundle the assets instead of Webpack. Webpack is something you would use at the application layer most of the time. So now I'm going to go back to the terminal. Let me clear it out. So what I'm going to do is I'll do an npm install of Rollup. Let's just add that dependency for now. Now if we go to rollupjs.org. There's going to be quite a few other things we have to install. So for one thing, we need to install node resolve package. There's a plugin called rollup plugin node resolve. This one will allow us to resolve any NPM dependencies. So this one is a must. Let's actually install that one as well. So now once we do that, the syntax is pretty simple. To compile a file, we can call rollup on a given file. So let's say main.js. We specify the output file. So for example, bundle.js. We also specify the format, and this could be something like ify, common JS, umd, or es modules, and we get the output by running that command. Let's actually go ahead and try it. So we'll go back to the terminal. I'll clear it out again. So let's do npx rollup, and we're going to do it on the source index.js file. The output will be, let's say, dist bundle.js, and the format, let's try common JS syntax. So this created the bundle. So now if we do cat on dist, bundle.js you're going to see that we get a file that has a use strict pragma as well as the console log statement now it doesn't have anything else but of course we could also go back and for example we could create a constant let's do some function so this will be just an empty function that doesn't do anything we're going to do an export default of that function so if i go back to the terminal so let's run that command again let's see the contents of the file and we get a, an arrow function, but in this case, as you can see, it transforms it down to a common JS index. In this way, something like this could actually be used as an NPM module because using the source code format, unless you use a bundler yourself, Node.js will not be able to understand that syntax. And now besides common JS, we could also use a bunch of other formats. So for example, we could use the ify format, which stands for immediately invoked function expression. In this case, we actually get an error because we need to specify the name for the output. But if I go back in here and if I change it back to the console log statement, if we try it now, we get the bundle so we can actually go ahead and output it. As you can see, it's simply a function that invokes itself. In this case, once again, it has the use strict pragma and it's going to output console log. And besides that, we also have other formats like UMD and ESM or ES for ES modules. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to add a config file. So let's do touch rollup.config.js. And once again, don't really be scared about the syntax. This is very, very similar to Webpack. It's basically the same concept. It's just a different syntax or a different way to accomplish the same result. So as it turns out in this file, we can actually use ES modules syntax. So we could do export defaults. So we'll pass in an object and this will be the configuration object. And now let's see if we can see some of the options in the documentation. I'm just gonna look for output. So one thing we can do is we can specify the input file and let's do exactly that. So the input will be source index.js the output in this case will be well, let's do a file we'll put in dist slash bundle.js 
We also have to specify the format. So the format will be, let's say, common.js. And if we're building an NPM module, this is the preferred format that we want to ship. And besides that, we could also put in things like external. If we have any dependencies in our code, we could also specify some globals if we have any. And there's also a section for plugins. So plugins is another thing that we can specify. So if I go back in here, I'm going to save the file as you can see everything gets auto formatted for us, which is very nice. So now to build our bundle, all we have to do is we need to call npx rollup and pass in the config option. So we're going to pass in dash C and this will use the rollup config.js file. And as you can see, it built the bundle. So now if we do cat on the dist bundle.js and you're going to see that we get the same output as before. So in this case, it's using common.js syntax. Now for a library like this, we want to not only ship the common.js syntax, which is useful for NPM, but we might also want to ship ES module syntax, which is going to be useful for bundlers in order to enable tree shaking. So we want to make sure that the end user is able to only import the files or components that they actually need and not the entire project. And now unfortunately using the common JS syntax, it's pretty much impossible. There is tools that try to do that, but because of the dynamic nature of common JS modules, tree shaking is very difficult, if not impossible. Now tree shaking, luckily for us, is actually very easy using ES modules. And now besides that, for environments like browsers, we might also want to ship the UMD bundle. So UMD is very similar to the IFA format. The benefit of the UMD format is that it actually supports multiple module specifications, like for example, AMD using something like require.js, or it also has support for common JS. And it can also be invoked in a global environment like a browser. So for example, on the window object. So now this one is a very versatile syntax and it's most often used in browsers that don't have any built workflow. So for example, if you're not using something like Webpack, you might pull in the bundle.js file yourself. So you could put in the bundle.js file manually, or you could even reference it from a CDN yourself. Using the UMD format, this will actually work in the browser from the get-go. So it sounds like we want to export multiple outputs and in fact in rollup we have an option to do that and so now if I look for output and instead of an object we're going to pass in an array so as you can see here we can pass in multiple configurations to create several bundles so now in the end what I'd like to do is I'd like to create several output files so instead of the dist directory we're going to create several bundles there's going to be bundle.js for the comma js syntax so we might as well put in cjs to denote that this bundle is indeed for comma js we might also have another one so this will be bundle.esm .js. The ESM syntax denotes that this file is intended for bundlers like Webpack and Rollup. So this one will actually be used in a build workflow. So for example, if you have a Create React app application or if you have a custom build setup with Webpack, this bundle ESM.js file is the one that's going to be used because we want to enable tree shaking in the project. And if this sounds confusing to you, I'm going to also include some of the resources under this video so you can read up more about the intricacies of these different module systems yourself. And the last one, like I said is we want to also enable support for umd so this will be bundle.umd.js so in the end i want to ship three different bundles like that so now with rollup it's actually fairly simple we're going to pass in an array instead of an object so we're going to have several objects instead of that array each for a different purpose so one of them is going to be the dist bundle.commonjs.js file format of course is going to be commonjs as well now the next one is going to be the same file except we're going to put in bundle.esm.js to denote that this file is indeed for ES modules. The format in this case is going to be ESM or you could also put in ES as a shorthand for ES modules and of course the last one will be file dist bundle.umd and this one will be for the format of UMD. Now in this case we can also specify a name for that bundle so we can pass in a name option and in fact in the documentation if you look for name name is something you would often specify for a umd export this one allows you to define a name for that bundle like i said so for instance if you were to put that file in a script tag in a browser and let's say if we give it a name of for example react css spinners if you were to use that name in a browser you would do something like window dot React CSS spinners. And then from there, you could do, let's say, a ring or a circle or something like that. So, this is why putting a name is very useful. This way, we can identify the global for our project that will allow us to access all of the spinners. And now you can see some of the configuration is being duplicated. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a constant. So, let's put in dist. I'll just set it to a dist string. 
and this one I'm going to change to a template string. So we're going to wrap this in a dist variable. So this way we're going to be passing the name as a variable. So now let's go ahead and try to build it. So back in the terminal. In fact, instead of doing it from the terminal all the time, I'm going to go back to the editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a script called build and we're going to call rollup with a dash C option. This way it's going to look for the configuration file. So now if we save it, let's go back to the terminal. Let's do npm run build. And as you can see, it created three different bundles. So if we do ls, on the disk directory, we have four different files. Now in this case, you'll notice the bundle.js file from the previous build. And this one we built ourselves just a few minutes ago. So for something like this, you want to make sure that the old files don't end up in the bundle. To be safe, you would want to make sure to, first of all, delete the disk directory if it exists already, and then recreate it using rollup. So before we even bundle our code, we want to make sure that we remove any of the leftovers from the last time. So for something like this, it's very common to use the rimref package. So if I look for rimref, this one is basically a very simple package that allows you to delete a directory if it exists. So now if I go to the terminal, I'm going to do npm install a dev dependency of rimref. So now once that's done, we can add a script. So we could either add, let's say, clean, and we can call rimref on the dist directory. And now we could either chain them. So for example, something like npm run clean and then run the rollup dash c command but it's a lot simpler to just simply have a pre-script so using npm we can actually set up pre and post scripts so for something like build we could set up a pre-build script this one will run before the build command so every time you do npm run build it's going to first execute the pre-build script if it's available in package.json. In this case, we could do npm run clean ourselves. Or because we're going to be using the clean command only in the build process, it also makes sense to just simply put it in pre-build like that because I don't think we're going to be using that clean command ourselves. So now let's save it. So if I do npm run build, it's going to first remove the disk directory. And then after that, it's going to generate the bundles. So now if we do ls on the disk directory, we get the three different bundles.